is a stunning piece of wood. I would have never thought in a million years that that would so have ended up coming out. Don't even see it very well because the it's so shiny the uh, lights reflect off of it. But So this is the project, um, I'm calling it my prehistoric bowl as you can see from the title. The reason being is because um, it's old, chunky and rough around the edges just like me. So. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, nothing else to say really, it's failed, no good. <laughs> so, I'll see you guys next week, fresh new project, one that works, and take care, speak to you soon, and bye for now. for coming over and joining us for another Sunday lunchtime live. Hope you're enjoying this windy, wet, miserable UK weather. Can't complain really. We've had some good weather since. Still a bit muggy, but it's wet and windy outside today. So we are here in a nice, I wouldn't say cool, but dry workshop. So we're going to finish off the piece we uh, messed up last Sunday. I actually, if you didn't come over Friday night, I actually managed to get it finished. So we used pink or a metallic pink uh, base coat. And then I put black crackle effect over the top of it. And then once that was dry, I laid some of these cogs on it that I'd been having, I'd had in the drawer for absolute ages. So it was about time to use them. And then I filled it with resin. There's quite a bit of resin on there. It must be about four, maybe five millimeters worth of resin on top of that. Um, but the plan is, is to remove this so you can see the cogs through the side. So we can curve the top, the edge of the resin over and you can see the cogs through the side. That is the actual plan, whether it work or not, I do not know, but we will try. And in this bit, I'm just gonna turn this out into a, a shallow dish area. So again, um, may leave a little bit of a room in there, I'm not sure, because some of the cogs are quite close to the timber. So I don't wanna be hitting the cogs. Uh, so I may leave a little bit of a room there and then try and leave a bit of the crackle on it. So it just tries to follow in inside that shaded bit. But anyway, we'll get on the label and we'll try. So just quickly, um, link I've put at the top of the description is for the Makers t-shirts because I just checked the link in the description. It wasn't working. So the link post uh, pegged to the top of the chat is for the logo t-shirts. Um, there are more than one type of t-shirt on the uh, Teespring website because of the, the Hampshire Sheen logo. So make sure you go on there and just use that as a link to the website and then scroll through the, the uh, Teespring website to pick the correct T-shirt that you want because there's burgundy logo and there's a yellow logo for the Hampshire Sheen, depending on what color T-shirt you're going to choose. Um, so that's for that. That's for this year's Makers Auction Charity. So all the funds we which get... Is? Which Hang on. Um, all the funds we get generated for the uh, makers t-shirts will go to this year's charity which is we're going to do for the british howard foundation this year you may or may not have seen the promotion video i put up uh, earlier today um i thought i'd chuck it out there we're going to do the auction um in november beginning of november we're not quite worked on the exact date yet but as soon as we know we will let you know and then we'll start promoting it and uh, sending out some cheeky emails for some donation pieces. So other than that, it is going on in the background. We've made a massive success over the last two years. 
uh, we've raised just over eight thousand pound in two years for uh, trying to think British Salvation Army and Dementia UK. So two great charities have really benefited from all your hard work through donating and purchasing. So hopefully we can carry that on and make another success of it this year and hopefully help the British Heart Foundation like we have the other two charities. So like I say, I always thank everybody for their support, whether it's just a pound raffle ticket or whether it's a donated piece or you buy a, do or you buy a raffle piece. It's, it's all about the community support and I really do appreciate it. So thank you very much. So as always, we've got Nick in the background. She's going to read out everybody, welcome everybody in while I get ready to start this piece. So I'll hand you over to Nick. Good afternoon, everybody. So we have Wood Wizardry by Colin. We have Dr. Bob. We have Shane Hurst. We have Paul Finley Wood turning at home. Um, Stephen, I say my chat is um, disconnected. I haven't pressed anything. Um, we also have Brian with a Y. I was to say your chat's there. Where? Hey. Yeah. Unable connect chat. Please try again later. Ooh, dodgy. Maybe thing I can do is re do it. Let's see if that brings it up. That's done up. Just go skip. Just yeah, skip. fine. All right. Yep. But you might miss some of the people yeah. earlier in. Yeah, I'll just get them to put a comment in like I normally do. And um, we've got Todd <clears> at Glencove Woodworks. We've got Doug Miller at Wood Spin Around. We've got Chris Dodds, Steve Hale, Norman Greenwell, Barry's Wood Creations, Joe Senior. We also have Amy. The advert is gross about people's toes. Yeah, I know, I see that um, earlier when I came on earlier. <laughs> Charlie at CET Woodturnin, um, Brent Beecroft. A little bit of shape, that is. Simon at, oh, why do they have these names? Filed, Coast Woodturnin. It's got a D in it, Coast Woodturnin. Um, we've got David J. Heath, the Guildford. Carpenter. Kicking a bit that one. All right, so let's zoom it out a bit. Uh, we also camera. have Richard Austin. If I've missed anybody, can you just put a comment in? Because, like I say, my for some reason, my chat disconnected. So obviously, I've only got the last few on. Um, let's see if I can get. Right. So first thing I'm going to do. Is get oh, and Roy's the boys on as well. All right, Roy. So first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this edge um, to expose the resin. And like I said, I just want to curve that over just a little tiny bit. I don't want to do a massive amount on it. Brian at Hartwood Turnin's on as well. All right, Brian, how are you? So I just want to gently remove that. So the best way to remove that would be coming in that way, I think. We'll just gently take that away and then we'll see how we can expose that and see what happens. Oops. Steve Hale, I think I said him. Steve Hale's on as well. So we'll just gently remove this. A sharp gouge. Try another one. <laughs> Benjamin's on, but he's now Sir Benjamin. Yeah, I see that Friday. <laughs> Nothing like bigging oh. yourself up. Be Lord next. Mm. Well, I'm Lady. <laughs> yeah.
I'm just gently removing this edge. Once I get the the resin exposed, and we know where we're going then. So we're nearly on the resin. So let's have a look at that. So we've just got the resin popping through here. So let's just gently take that back. Door 60's on as well. Hi Andy, how are you? So Richard Austin said, Steve did a bowl using carnival colours. It's like stained glass. What tape or whatever was used to mark out the lines between the triangles? It's masking tape, not masking tape. It's when you do pinstripes on cars. It's that sort of tape. It's only, only you can buy it in about anywhere from three millimeters wide to like six or seven millimeters wide. And depending on how wide you want the lines to be, depending on which one you use. But I will, I'm in the process of doing a video to show people how I did it. So uh, hopefully within the next uh, week, the video should be out. <laughs> Christos said, Ben, you should have gone with Supreme Leader. Supreme Leader. Troublemaker. That's sort of something <laughs> sort of you see on uh, Star Trek, isn't it? Supreme Leader. Mm -mm. All right, so we've still got a little bit of the uh, crackle effect paint on here. So we'll just get rid of that. And then we know where we're going. Thanks, to everybody who came over Friday for Emma. Really good life, really, really good life. Loads of information shared by Emma, as always. Like all the professional turners do, they're always happy to share their knowledge. Some good questions as well, as always. Right, so that's all the paint off of there now. So now we Richard can start. Said that's great, Steve. Thanks. Um, we can now start rounding this. I don't want to round it too much. I want to take the bare minimum off the resin as I can get, but I just want to reduce this edge. And as always with resin, speed is your friend. The faster you can go, the better the cut you will get. And the bigger the mess you make. Yeah. <laughs> like that little spider web. You love it. Yeah, love it, I do. Must be mad I was doing resin on Friday night as well. Must be mad. All right, so that's just took the corner off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten this out to get this the, the front face flat now. So once I've got the front flat, front face flat, once I've got <laughs> the front face flat, I then can work out how big a arc I want on the corner or take the corner off. You so, put your weekday teeth in. You should have put your weekend teeth in. I know. Um, Paul Finley said, just to let everyone know, I will not be doing a live tomorrow afternoon as he's been suffering from kidney stones and he's still not feeling better to do a live. Oh, I hope well, you feel better soon, yeah, Paul. Yeah, I hope you feel better. Oh. Oh. Stop eating it. It's going up my nose. <laughs> you need one of them nose clips at the swimmers. <laughs> Every time I breathe, it comes towards my mouth. Mm -hmm. I know, <laughs> don't breathe. <laughs> you said it before I did. I knew exactly where you was going, love. <laughs> so nice and light passes. Just to flatten this out, because it's a bit uneven. Like I say, the mo the much speed as you can get, the better with resin. Obviously, not that much speed is going to shatter and explode. But um, Len's handcrafted wood signs is on as well. Hi, Len. How are you? Where's the old boy today? What's he up to? Terry's on holiday, isn't he? Oh, yeah, of course he is. Again. Again, he's always on. Don't it? blame him. So we've got just over half we hit, so. Got 
Copper Wood turns on as well. Good afternoon. Did I say Roger Kent? I think I did, but anyway, welcome, Roger. Pete from Twisted Trees. Twee. <laughs> ah. Twisted Trees is on. Right, he Pete. said, just to let everyone know, Terry Skyven again. So he's covering his live alt this evening at 8 p.m. and he's put his link in. Nearly there. Nearly there. So close, yet so far away. <sighs> so what's everybody been making in their workshops for the last week then? I'm sure you've all been making something interesting. Barry put Nikki, did you enjoy Steve's demo Thursday? Seems strange not going and keeping him company. Yeah, well, bloke said to me, do you always go with him? I went, no. I said, uh, his mate normally goes with him. I said, but he's uh, got his own demo. And no, it's quite nice. It was, he didn't put anyone to sleep. You'll be pleased to know. <laughs> so. I mean, if you'd have known Steve when I first met him, certainly a change from how he is now, definitely. He's definitely got a lot more confidence and never in a million years did I think he'd be stand in front of people doing what he does. But no, it was good. Naked dancing. <laughs> so. <laughs> right, we're nearly there. We're nearly there, you'll be glad to hear. Roy said he's got some more free wood today. Oh, Roy. Um, I think Olivia's on as well. Hi, Olivia. I need to get her to sleep. <laughs> I'll try my best. Matthew Once Lawrence upon a time. is on. Hi, right, Matthew. How are you? A little bit of vibration on that average. Are we all? Oh, just that little bit there, look. Just that little bit there. Gary Glass is on as well. Hi, right, Gary. How are you? He's not been making anything as he's away back to work. So my lathe's shining like a new penny again. <laughs> uh. Oh, Steve, kiss. I'm surprised he ain't Steve got a cover for his, actually. He has to give it a little kiss goodnight. And... I come here and read it a bedtime story every night. Mm -hmm. I put a little clock on the side so I can see how many hours before it sees me again. Right, so we're Only all... Only because it's more pleased to see than I am. Oh, this is true. <laughs> So we've just got a little tiny air bubble in there, so we'll perhaps just take one more pass off of there, see if we can get rid of that. But other than that, it's looking pretty good. We love each other, really. Did that sound like I said that through gritted teeth? <laughs> yeah. Norman Greenwell said he's tried making a sphere, but he think he invented a new shape that even Disney couldn't draw. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Still a bloody air bubble in there. Let me sharpen this gouge up, unless I've got a sharp edge on this other end. Oh, yeah, I have. That would be fine. If we can get a pass over a nice sharp gouge. Bit of speed. Nice and slow. No pressure at all. Just let the friction of the blade run over that. So we can get rid of them air bubbles. There's a little air bubble just there, look, just there. I said that to make a nice clock. Tick tock tick. 
professor's on. Hi, professor, how are you? Doug Miller said he turned a small cherry vase the other day. Video's up. Nice. Oh, it's picked up the resin. Spin me round. Who invented resin? What a messy old stuff, isn't it, eh? That must be satisfying, though. To get that up the hoover. You'll find out after life. I ain't. What? What was in your contract? You've got to start paying me, babe. You're the highest paid airworm on the internet. Don't even get flowers. <laughs> Don't start that. I'd be happy if you made me some flowers. I'd love some wooden flowers, you know? Where's that violin again? Right. Sir Benjamin said, are the cogs actually metal, Steve, or painted plastic? No, they're metal. They're actually metal, Ben. They are lovely. I did look at some plastic ones, <laughs> and they look really cheap and nasty. So I, I paid a little bit extra and got the metal ones. Pete just put, well, it would have made a nice clock, Nikki, but Steve glued all the clock parts down so it won't work. <laughs> He's an idiot, isn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Todd's put um, hashtag flowers for Lady Nikki. <laughs> Grandpa Jim would turn us on. Hi, Grandpa Jim. He says, good morning from Upper Michigan. Good morning, sir. Dr. Bob agrees it'd be a lovely clock. Can you not well, turn it into a clock? I okay, can turn it into whatever you want, my darling. Can you gonna... turn it into flowers then? <laughs> I'm good, but I ain't that good. <laughs> Doug Miller said he's going to get some resin today to fill cracks, splits and voids in a large piece of cherry. Maybe interesting. Yeah, that's good, Amy. She put, should make a hashtag week and everyone makes flowers for Nikki. <laughs> Ben said, it's not too late to make it a clock. No, it's not. Shane Hurst put hashtag flowers for Nikki. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> Steve Gordon's on. Hi, Steve, how are you? No, I thought you lot were my friends. <laughs> Mick Deuce is on as well. Hi, Mick, how are you? All right, so I'm just trying to get that flat. I know we got to sand it, but that's the best I'm going to... Well, got... If you're good at making flowers, Brian, if you made one every month and we saw you in November at Harrogate, so that's what we... You know, we'd have three. to make... How many a month would you have to make? Depends July, many you August, September, October. When's Harrogate? October. You could get one five. November, so Harrogate. you could get ten done by then, couldn't you, Brian? <laughs> and he is retired after all. He's got nothing else to do. <laughs> Ward Wilson's on. Hi, Ward. Right, that's as far as I'm going to... from the west coast of oh, Arizona. I'm going to sand the rest of that because there's a little bit there and I just can't get rid of it. Every time I go over, it comes back. So I'm just going to sand over that. Right, Amy, so... Amy said a um, brother and sister-in-law are coming over to the UK for six weeks. They got anything planned over here, Amy? Woodbridge O'Connor said, I'm a bit worried about the biggest blank of you. It's 12 before. Don't know if my lathe or shed will survive, lol. Who's that? Colin. Why 1.30? Ben, he put, I can't wait till 1.30 going to make poached eggs. <gasps> Uncle Brian told me no. <laughs> I'm going to cry. <laughs> Uncle Brian. I'm not used to being told no. Yeah, you're right. You're not used to being told no. <laughs> Well, you're my friend. All right, just sharpen this up. Do you want this as a clock or not? Time nice to tell me now. Office. No, 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 no. I don't want it in the office. I don't want tat in the office. 
Quint tax. I don't need a clock in an office That'll anyway. It'll get used got... more as a clock than it will as anything else. I've got a, um... Unless you've got ideas for it. If you turn it into a bowl. Are you turning it into a bowl? No, I ain't going to turn it into anything. I was going to turn it into a platter, but if you want it as a clock, I'll do you a clock. I'd rather it was a clock. I'll use it as a clock. All right, okay. Uh, <coughs> Pete said, is all this clock talk pre preparation for Steve funneling this piece? <laughs> Brent said a clock as well, and Dr. Bob said a clock, so there you go. Right then. So I need to find a clock workings with some hand with some hands. I ain't worried about the numbers. You're right, you're not getting numbers on it, you can't know everything. What is where Colin said clock? Let's have a look what I got. Brian everything he makes his tat. <laughs> Mick do said do a clock, Steve. My God, he's actually doing something I want. Let me stop you bleating. Right, so I've got some workings. So I need to put a hole through the middle in, don't I? What, whoa, 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 what colour workings are you putting on it? Black. Perfect. I know it's perfect. That's why I picked them. That was either that or red, and red wouldn't stand out very well on it. God almighty, you always put me on the spot. Chris Dodd said, make it a sundial. <laughs> no, Dr. Bob said clock. Amy right. said that her brother's seen all the cousins and their kids and their kids going to a few truck shows and try a t to tour from top to bottom and maybe a close and maybe the close countries. And what are they going nice. to do for the other four weeks in? Mm -hmm. They're coming over six. Brian with a Y said he's just made a, video, a clock on his latest video. Oh, well done, sir. Right. So let's drill a hole through the centre first. Find out what size we need this clock. You've workings. resined it already, don't you? What? The centre. Is it just colour? No, that's just colour. Right, so I need to work out how big we need to make the hole for that. Well, you said tick tock, tick tock, Steve will turn into Peter Pan. <laughs> so that's <laughs> seven... Amy put hashtag Nikki one for once. <laughs> seven and a half mil, so let's put an eight mil hole through there. So eight mil hole. And what I'll do is I'll route her out the working where the workings go in once it's uh, dry and everything else. Oops. So turn the lathe down, put a hole through the center. Funnel. Here it comes. So that should be big enough for that hole to be. Let's just take the stuff off of it. That should go through there. Perfect. So I need to work out the length of that because I will use the tenon on the back. No, I won't. The mortise on the back. So we need, we've got 15 mil of thread. So that can't be no thicker than 15 millimetres there. Actually, it wants to be less than that because we've got to put a knot on it. So it wants to be about 10 millimetres. So we want the middle to be about 10 millimetres thick. So let's get our depth. And then we'll go from there. So Nick always gives you guys this spiel that she never wins. She always gets her own way. Always gets her own way. I don't.
let's just check the thickness of that. I don't want to make that too thin. Um, get a little hook on that. Excuse me. Sorry, it's just um. So oh, mark a pens on the bench. <laughs> Benjamin said, "Make it a twenty-four hour clock." I'm going to put it on the calendar, Doctor Bob. <laughs> Colin said, "Wow, Steve making a deliberate funnel, lol." And Pete said, "No fast for Nikki now. She got a clock." <laughs> so. And said, "Woohoo! It's one thirty. Back in a bit." <laughs> Pete said, "Stop." Andy, the Valley would turn us on. Hi, Andy. How are you? So I'm just going to measure this depth for this. Pete said 10 millimetres after the route and on the back. Yeah, I'm going to use the actual, well, it's 20 mil thick that is still. So I've got another 10 mil for that. Um, I'm actually going to use the, the flat of the mortars. That'll be my, my baseline when I um, router it out. <laughs> Andy's put shopping in Tesco. Help. Never do that. Never, 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 never. So we'll never 10 mil off of this. Have it delivered to the door, don't we, mate? Yep. Dr. Bob put... Good, you pump me your princess, Steve. <laughs> Len said, Steve, behind every good man, there's a good wife. Just ask my wife, she'll tell you. And the professor said they all do eventually. The ladies just wear us down into submission. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it gets it easier than some. Believe you me. Don't you, mate? Sorry? Oh, sugar. I thought that was empty. I spilled my coffee. You've got a pretty easy life. I mean... I took the youngest to town last night at half nine to go clubbing and then picked her up at half three this morning. And Steve rang me at four o'clock and asked if I was all right. <laughs> I was just pulled in the drive. <laughs> uh. So I didn't make him do that because I know he's no good at when he wakes up that he can't be awake, whereas... I don't sleep very well anyway, so it's been a good, good job. Oh, sugar, which is really a good job, really, after uh, only surviving about three hours kip today. So I need about a millimetre. So get that violin out again, please. Yeah, get that violin out. No, not listening to me. I am don't listening don't know why I have this headset on, because you don't listen to a word I say. I, I am listening to you. You're not listening to me. You never listen to me. <laughs> As long as you know that. Do a punch up. Come on in. Cruising for a punch. <laughs> what are you on today? <laughs> Three hours sleep. That's what I'm on. <laughs> right, I need to make that come out. Then I as far as what these hands are, so that wants to go. <laughs> Colin wants told to Roy you should. Have... No, Roy told Andy you should have stayed in the car. And Andy said, if I stayed in the car, God knows how much the bill would be. <laughs> or how long. I sit in the car, I'm normally in it for at least two hours. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bob put, to top it off, use diamonds for the numbers. <laughs> I've got some cheap plastic ones. Well, he said, now, now, girls. <laughs> yeah. Chris Dodd said, a wise man once told me four words. Yes, dear, you're right. Very wise man, as it turned out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Len put Nicky, it's called convenient deafness. I think what? he is going deaf. He won't what? admit it, but he is going deaf. I'm looking forward to the day. So once we get this right, we'll... Um... <laughs> Professor, but it's when all the mates get in the car as well and you spend all night being a taxi to five drunk girls. No, nope, very good. I arrived, told her I was there. She came straight out. Her and her mate. I did take a friend home. 
who left her car here. So, yeah, joy of uh, having teenagers. I've just told the oldest daughter because her car's at Maddie's. She's gone out, isn't she? Yeah. Gone on Norfolk Balls today with her work colleagues. And um, I just said to her, if she wants to have a drink, I don't want her to not. So I said, if she needs a drink, then I can always, we can run the car home with her or go take her home, pick Jay up, whatever, can't we? Pete, stop giving people bad ideas. But Andy, say you will wait in the pub watching the pole dancers. You'll be amazed how quick the shopping can get done then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're just going to check, see if that's long enough for our hands. Oh, just. Maybe I have to take a little bit more out of there. You know what just, you do then, Pete? Just take a little bit more out of that. When Lisa's doing the shopping. So we don't want to be... I want to leave a little bit of a rim in there because I wanted to see a little bit of the wood before... We get so we'll perhaps do half the amount. So we've got it started. So remember, wherever the bevel's pointing is where the gouge is going to go because we want to go in at an angle. We've got to bring our handle right over. And we're just going to gently curve that, bring our handle round as we're going in to try and bring into that curve in the bottom where we've already got it. So, we're going to see what we've got because this is this bit across here has got to be the same level all the way across because if not, the hands are going to rub on the end here. So, we've just got a little bit more to take out of there. But obviously, we've got to make sure we don't go through the bottom. Nice slow feed. Just gently feathering it out. <laughs> Ward was said, I prefer it to call, to call it selective hearing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I say as well. Voice right, wipes so, is the same. So we're just going to get a scraper. I'm not going to use a negative rate scraper just to get in there, just to clean that up. Tool rest of a little bit helps. Pete, but I do the shopping and the cooking. Nikki, Lisa can't cook and has no idea what ingredients are needed to make beans on toast. Ah, <laughs> uh, is it that she can't cook or won't cook? Says that she can't cook, so that you. Do I used to do that was washing up. You sorry, I might hash of it, and then we bought a dishwasher. So problem solved. Right, be about it. <laughs> no Oops, way. nearly took the tip off my. Drill bit then. Get rid of this out of here. Put that away. Right, so we've got the shape we want. We've got the book, um, the recess for the clock. Oh, you made the clock, are yeah? Oh. So we're just going to sand it up now. <laughs> I'm going to sand the resin first, and then we'll get the drill out and sand this bit in here. I'm going to leave this bit natural, so I'll perhaps just oil this like I did the back. Um, so. Chris just, said you just have to nod your head every now and again. You've got to just say get, yes. The art of it is to get the yes and no's in the right place. That's the art of it. Once you've mastered that, everything should be a happy way. Mm -hmm. Right, so I'll drink my coffee before it gets cold. Who made that? 
can you rest my case? Do everything. <laughs> Hello, Joe. How are you? Right. So we're going to sand this resin up. So turn it down a little bit. Joe Gareth Allison. I think that's yeah, how you say it. We're just going to bring it around the corner, blend in that corner. And we're going to do the back as well because obviously we're squared up a little bit. So we'll just get rid of that sharp edge on that back. Just stop that and have a look. This is that damaged bit here you can just see. So we're just going to take that back to get rid of that. Just keep running the sandpaper over it till we, till we get a nice flat surface along it. Again, this wasn't put in a pressure pot. This was just cold poured and left to cure. How long? Um, well, it's been left since last Sunday to cure. Oh, I'm not here next Sunday. Are you not? No. Let's see what we've got. See if we got rid of it. No, it's still got a little tiny bit in there. If you don't get rid of it now, you'll never get rid of it. So you just need to spend a bit of time getting rid of any shadow lines you've got. Ruby Claire's on. Hi Ruby, how are you? Jim's on, just says Jim. Hello Jim. Um, they've asked if Brian's doing a live tomorrow evening. He said he was. I'm sure he'll put his link in for you guys. Right, so that's sanded up to 80 grit. So we're going to go up through the grits to 400. And I'm just going to concentrate on the resin at the moment. I think Pete's doing tonight, Ruby. Yeah, Pete's covering Terry tonight. Brian did say Friday night he was going to do a live on Monday evening. He's going to show you how to make flowers. <laughs> Seeing as he won't make them. That's all right, I'll just cry into my coffee. I know you don't love me. Ruby put, you're right, Peter's tonight. I've lost another day. <laughs> sure. yeah. What time are you on tonight? Eight o'clock, you said that. Um, what time are you on tomorrow, Brian? Brent's put WT360 tomorrow. Yep, it is. Discussion. I lost a day as well, Ruby. Well, I sort of gained a day. So I thought yesterday was Sunday. I lost a day. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so we're gradually getting there. So that was 240. 
So this is 320. Oh! Boxes is heavy! Brian's put 715. And you'll put your link in, Brian, yeah? I'd have done it for you, but it'll cost you flowers. <laughs> Blackmail now. <laughs> oh. Ruby said her shop has been invaded by log people and mice. Oh, nice. No, mice, not nice. So, last one, 400. Oh, oh yeah. So that's up to 400 grit. We can just start to see through it. But obviously we've still got some scratch lines in there to go. So I don't know if I've got any 600. Have I got any 600? Oh, yeah, I have got some 600 here. So let's do a 600. This one's 600, so we jump from 400 to 600, and I think that's the highest I have with sanding pads. I think anything over that is wet and dry. But you just start to see the micro scratches going in it. So I'm not going to go any further with that now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over the wood. And then we'll bring the wood up to where we want it. And then we'll final polish the resin once the wood is done. So we don't scratch it anymore. So let's just get the drill, whatever that is, over there. So I'm going to start on the inside. And as always, when sanding with a drill, only bring this edge to the corner where you want, because as soon as you start coming over that edge with the with the flap, you're going to start rounding it. And we want to try and keep a nice sharp corner there. Um, yeah, you are, Roy, keeping me up. <laughs> um, Gary said. D, did you use a specific resin as it was a cold pour? No, I used the epoxy, what I always use, mate. You just got to make sure that the area is clean, haven't you, for it to dry in? Well, as long as it's, as long as it's, as long as it's dry, there's no moisture in the atmosphere. And as long as um, there's no air, if you seal your wood, if you just see, if you just pour resin over a natural wood, if you seal it with some sand and sealer first, so the air can't come through the sand and sealer, that will prevent a lot of air bubbles. Um, there's a little tiny air bubble there, which has obviously come from underneath one of the cogs as it's cured. But I'm hoping when we polish it all out and get a bit of wax in, it's going to cover that up. But it's um, as long as you keep an eye on it when that's, as it's curing and you pop any air bubbles with a hot air gun or whatever, then you should be fine. So 
that's got rid of all the imperfections. We'll gradually go up the grit. It's going to take this up to 400 because I'm going to oil this like I did the the back to keep it all the same. Gary said, thanks, Steve. All right. Ruby said, I really like this piece. Thank you, Ruby. Brian hadn't done his link yet. Been doing all morning. Um, Mick said, which sand and sealer, Steve? Uh, cellulose I would use. I'd use a cellulo sand and sealer. I think if you used in a water base, that might affect the uh, the uh, resin because obviously it's uh, there might still might be a little bit of moisture in the sand and sealer. But a couple of thin coats. Don't put a thick gloopy coat on. Put a couple of thin coats on so it can soak into the timber nice and deep. <laughs> so, do, 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 so this is 180. I'm so glad I hoovered up in there yesterday. So we've just got a little bit of a hump there coming where I've started rubbing there more than I've done the other. So just try and get rid of that. That's true when you try and Mick said thanks, Steve. All right, mate, anytime. Brian, with a wise got a question. Can you use a hot air gun to clear bubbles or does it need to be a flame? You can use a hot air gun if it's hot enough. Um, but I always use a flame to get a better result with it. I use one of those like little flambe, is that flambe? Torches. I can get my fans in for about seven or eight quid. That's better. That's better. Yeah, a little, um, I'll show you, I've got one here. Just a little glow torch. Donna Love Angels on. Hi, right, Donna, how you doing? One of these, this is all you need just to pop the air bubbles. Don't need nothing major. Much better. Do, 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 do. Right, so we've got two more grits to go, 320 and 400. And then we are ready to clean it up and put some oil on it, ready to finish our resin off. Last one. I use a frame for a. Yeah. 
No bubbles, no resin, no workshop. <laughs> You can Jim, spray. You Jim can Bob's on. Oh, Jim. It's Jimbo. You, you can spray uh, isopropene. Oh, isopropene. Sure, it's isopropene. Isop What's it on that bottle in there, Nicola? Isopropene. Which on? which one? That white bottle on the bench. Ice isopropyl alcohol. Yes. You can spray that over, and that will pop. Oh, spray. That's a chemical. I know it's a chemical, oh. but you can spray it over to get rid of the air bubbles. Got a little shadow line there now. Oh my goodness. What's going on today? I've had a whole weekend where nothing's gone right. <laughs> Route all blew up, didn't it, mate? Yeah. Literally. There's a new one come today, and then you went to finish cutting the worktop, and something else was wrong, weren't it? I weren't wrong. That's just a, the 30 mil bushing guide that I need for the worktop jig is won't fit in the new router. Woodridge Rocon said, same as um, Surgical Spirit, apparently. Oh, okay. Right, <laughs> Dr. Bob, I've got to read this. Please show your loyalty to our earworm and her other, other one by and the other one by giving her a big thumbs up. <laughs> That's better. I wanted it to sit on the front. Why are you sanding it all out? I can't sit on the front, Nicola, because the, the clock workings isn't long enough. See, you can tell he's cross because he called me Nicola. Nicola. <laughs> ben said, Steve, I 3D printed a bushing for my router as I needed it to be super low profile. Yeah, I did look on Thinker Thieves and uh, I couldn't find one, mate. If not, I would have done. That was my first option. I managed to print one for my other, my router, my Makita Palm router. But this, I couldn't get one for this router. Because it's got a spring clip mechanism there. You pull a lever and that just locks in. And I just couldn't find one with the right thickness to do. Yorkshire gets on. Hello, Glyneth. my glasses, I can't see out of them. Right, so we're going to oil the middle with some citrus burnishing oil. Citrus burnishing oil from Hampshire Sheen. Fanatical about finishes. Oh, sugar lumps. Didn't want to do that, did I? Uh, my bat sticks got underneath. I'm sure it gets harder work as I get older, the bend down. Oh, where's all my tissue? Ben said, what new router did you get? Oh, uh... Makita. Yeah, Makita. I don't know what, um... No, I don't know what model it was. Two, three, I don't know. Couldn't tell you, mate. It's, uh... I just had to remortgage your house for it. Well, the other one, Eric, was 20 years old. That's not the point. It should last another 20 years. In my eyes. Um, let me see if I can just... Because no doubt, with my Google search, I'll most probably come up with... Because uh, the eye in the sky follows us all, so I'm sure I'll come up with uh, the exact one that I've been I've just bought. Let's have a look. Uh, let's have a do it. Right, RP, RP233FCJ240, half-inch plunge router. 
that's the one I just bought. All right, so we're going to oil all the wood, and then we're going to finish the resin. So then we don't get, because I want to just wet sand that. So I want to oil that so I don't get no moisture into the timber. Yeah, I was devastated. A poor router started screaming at me. And uh, I looked on trend to try and get a replacement bearing for it. And it came up saying, this product is obsolete. So never mind. If this one lasts as long as the other one did, I'll be happy, bunny. I'll be retired by the time this one burns out, hopefully. So we're going to make sure we ram a little bit in this. Make sure we get some... Look at this. Look how pretty that looks. Look how pretty that looks like. Very nice. I might sell this. It comes out really nice. Got to buy a clock, Nick. Not listening. Well, it is coming up to your birthday, so... So give us a couple of coats of oil. I love the citrus burning oil, it smells lovely. So we're going to give us a couple of coats. Um, the idea with the burnishing oil is you, you apply a couple of coats and then just get a dry cloth and turn your label and rub it all off. Doug Miller's got to go, he said it's looking great, he'll watch the rest later. Thank you Doug. Um, and it just leaves a, a subtle sheen behind. It's not going to it's not going to shine because it's a burnishing oil and it's not designed to shine. So uh, it's just to give you a little bit. Of... Glenn said he's got loads of normal size bearings. <laughs> yeah, this is a bigger. This is a inch and a half. No, inch and three quarter. And I think the centre diameter is. Donna oh, said that looks amazing, Steve. I can't remember what the centre is. But it's actually part of the casing. You can't get it out of the casing, so you have to buy, as it was a piece, you you have to buy all the lower part of the router as well. So it's a stupid design, really. But Steve. What, Don? Donna Love Angel said that looks amazing. Thank you, Donna. Thank you very much. So I've given that two coats. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to burnish Green that off. said nominal. Nominal? What's that mean? Nominal. 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 God, I'm high on life. <laughs> so I'm just going to burn. Living this off. the dream. Living the dream. Just going to burnish <laughs> this off, and then we're going to give it another couple of coats. Oh. I think I need a nap. No, you don't. You won't sleep tonight if you nap. And I can get lay in tomorrow. Woohoo! Right, so let's have a look. Oh, wrong button. There we go. Right. He just put, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get stroppy, Glyneth. Right, so second coat. Or third coat, whatever you want to come across it. So I want to get plenty on it because I'm just going to wet and dry this outer edge because you get a nice finish with wet and dry on it. Actually, bring makes that look a nice, better colour, doesn't it? <laughs> Pete said, "Nikki, I heard Steve. I heard Steve. I heard Nikki really wants an RP450 Sabre for her birthday. What's one of them? Bansel. You're not having nothing else. He's just had Dave. He's not having nothing else. 
works. It encourages him to the workshop and he don't get the jobs done at home, in the house, at home, in the house. I don't know if the 450 would be too big for me, Pete, to be honest. I think the 350 might be big enough. That's a big machine, the 450. I don't even know. It's a bandsaw. I just told you I that. I know, but I don't even know what it looks like. If you Google it, you know what to buy me for Christmas. No, I'm not. You're not having it for Christmas. You've got me. You don't need anything else. Like I said, if you look Google it, you'll be able to know what to get me for Christmas. You're getting socks and pants. That's what you're getting. Ooh, living the dream. Living the dream. You know when you get old, when you get socks and pants for Christmas? Nice, nice. Right, so we need to just finish up that resin. Uh, so I need my water pot, which is here. Ben said, so is it meths or white spirit you use to clean tongue oil off brushes? Google is saying you can use either, but that doesn't sound right. I don't know. I've never used tongue oil, Ben, so I couldn't tell you that. I'm sure Pete can help you. Just clean my pot out. Oh, me Peter! Some, grab me some water, Nick. Oh, I'm not your skivvy. I know. But you Have you got wife. a cuff? Do you want me to use one of these? No, I want you to put some in here. Oh, how much? Oh, it's about that line there, please. Oh, oh about to leave the headset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this. Um, we took up the 600. So I've got some wet and dry here from uh, that's twelve hundred. I think eight hundred upwards. Yeah, eight hundred up to two five. So we've got eight hundred, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred, and two five. So we'll just wet and dry that up to that. We'll get a bit of cloth on a board so it catches the water because we don't want water everywhere. If you wanted to, you could polish this off with the mopping kit from Chestnut Products or any other supplier. Um, but I want to do it with wet and dry because I feel you get a little bit of a better finish with it with wet and dry. So we're just waiting for Nick to bring some water back. But I think she's got to go to the bottom of the garden. But that looks quite nice, actually. I quite like that. Quite like the look of that. Get a nice shine on it, be even better. The colours I used are, I'll show you the colour I used. Um, let's have a quick look, see if I can find it out. Here it is. Hey, babe. So this is what I used, metallic purple. I gave it a base coat. I gave it two base coats of that. I turned off the colour I put on before it. I sanded and sealed it. And then I put two coats of that on. And then it was the black crackle effect over the top of it once it was all dry. Uh, so what are we going for first? 800. I think that's that one for 800. Mick said you're really old and you're happy to get socks for Christmas, lol. <laughs> I'll never be absolutely got socks. Are you answering Richard's question? Yeah. Yeah, so it was that it was that um metallic pink. So I'm just gonna wet my piece first, turn the lathe down low. Don't want to be no more than about five or six hundred RPM. I've changed my mind, don't like the colour of it. Oh that's all right, I'll sell it. <laughs> Actually that's a bit fast, I should press what be less than that. So I'm just gonna Gently hold that on there, and you're going to keep the paper lubed, because if not, that'll just try and grab it out of your hand, and end up scratching, if not. It's actually, that wax is actually clogging up my, clogging up me uh, sandpaper, so I need to take that wax off first. Or oil, should I say. It's clogging up my paper. 
Go again. That's better. So you don't need to spend a lot of time doing this because uh, you've already sanded up to 600. All you're doing really is just removing the, si the 600 mil, 600 mil, 600 grit um, sander mark. So it shouldn't take a lot to get it out. What you can do is, like I say, once this is all done, you can always buff it to get any little imperfections out of it. But once you've gone up to two and oh, a half no. thousand, what? You didn't charge my headset. Once you've gone to two and a half thousand grit, you shouldn't really see any sander marks in it. So you'll see, even with. 800, you can see the difference. So that's 800. 1200 is next. It's 15, it's 1200. Let them soak a little bit. Always good to let your um, wet and dry paper soak a little bit. Yeah, I've just been outside. It's lovely out there. Is it? Even that says thundery showers at three o'clock. Can never trust the weather. So that's the 1500, no, that's the 1200 even. So we chuck in the two and a half and we'll get the 1500 out. And you'll find the higher the grit you go, the more grabby your um, paper will be. Because it's getting where there's no high spots, so the paper's trying to grab out of your hand. So you need to keep it really well lubed with liquid. So our final one, make sure we clean all the grit off of it. So our final one will be two and a half thousand. Make sure we get the right one. Is that one? A bit like pottery. Oh, sorry, Jimmy had a question that said um, to everyone, I'm thinking of buying a wobble chuck. What's the difference, if any, between that and an eccentric chuck? Do they both do the same thing? I don't know. I wouldn't know nothing about wobble chucks. Never had one. Never used one. So, um, Ben said some chucks only allow you to rotate in a single plane, two-dimensional, others allow you to pivot about a point, so more 
three dimensional and then Pete's just put on just reprofiled my skew from 15 inch to 20 inch now I can't drive it <laughs> <laughs> that's degrees not inches oh sorry I don't know well inches are like little two commas right so that's up to two and a half thousand. So there shouldn't be any. If there's any scratches in there, you should only you shouldn't be able to see them because they should be so fine that the naked eye shouldn't be able to see them. So what I'm going to use over that now is I'm going to use some burnishing cream over the top of that just to polish that out. I've got a rag here that I always use for my burnishing cream. Keep burnishing cream on it. Keep it in a bag to try and keep it supple. So we're just going to, again, we don't want it over our loads over our wood. We just really want it over our resin. And what the burnishing cream does is basically just like a tea cut. So it should just put a, any fine scratches in it. It should just polish out. But like I say, we don't really want it over the wood. We only really want it over the resin. So I'm going to be a little bit careful with this. So just gently hold it on. Just keep moving it about, not pushing too hard because I don't want to generate loads of heat. I want to try and just use it as a polish or a, a, a cream to get rid of all those micro scratches that may be left in it. You might have to go this a couple of times. You can use a little bit more speed if you want to. Speed. speed. Feel the need for speed. So we'll just speed up a little tiny bit on this coat. Trouble is, the more faster you got it, the quicker it dries out because obviously the friction and the heat will cause it to dry out. But keep moving your rag because you don't want it to score it. If you hold it in one place too long, it may just score the piece. And you don't really want that. The idea of it is to polish it up. So we're just going to get a clean cloth then i'm going to use a tissue for this a cloth for this i'm just going to buff it off and what we're just going to stop it and shine a light across it and see if there's any scratches or any marks in it and if there is then we can just adjust it has as to be away. perfect for me it has to be perfect if you're going to sell something so we're just going to get a light on it let's put that light there on it uh if i can find how to turn it on <laughs> So we're just looking across it, see if there's any scratches in it. I can just see a couple of little tiny swirl marks in that, so I'm just going to do it again with the burnishing cream. Um, Colin's asked, wouldn't Microfine do the same job? No, Microfine doesn't go fine enough. I've never, ever been able to get a perfect finish on resin with Microfine. I can't get it to go fine enough. People can, and I take my hat off to them, but I just can't. I just, I have to finish it off with burnishing cream or some sort of cut and polish to get a perfect glass-like finish on it. All right, so we're just going to do it again. I mean, I've just sanded that up to 2,500 grit, and you can still see some micro scratches in it. Microfine only goes up to 2,000 grit, so, you know what I mean? It's up to you. You finish it on what you want, but I just like to get it so there's not a, not a mark in it. I mean, you can use microfine up to 2000 and go beyond that with whatever else you want to do, which is what I sometimes do. If I'm doing an egg, that's what I'll do. I'll use microfine up to 2000 and then sand it, wet sand it after that. But like I say, you use what you want to use. Depends on how much of a finish you want on it.
So we're just going to buff that off. So just double check it. That's much better. Much, much better. Yep, that'll do. Put my cloth back in its bag. Keep it moist. Just for you, Ben. I've plugged this in. Let's keep its own battery low. Have you plugged it in and turned it on? How do I turn it on to charge? I've done it through the... Turn your head. Oh. What's it doing now? Nothing. She didn't say nothing yet. The light stopped flashing, so hopefully mm. it's working now. Right, so what I'm going to do now is just going to give this another coat of um, oil. It's a little, raise the grain a little tiny bit there. So we're just going to get a bit of wet, a bit of sandpaper, and just sand that up a little bit. We're just going to give that another coat of uh, burnishing oil. Norman Greenwell says, looks great, Steve. Benjamin put moist. Moist. And we said it takes longer than you would think to make this. So we're just going to sand that down. So it was a little bit of raised grain, or whether it was a little bit of water that got on it and raised the grain, or whether it's, or whether it's uh, just where the oil had gone into it. But that's just got rid of that. So what we're doing now is we'll give it another coat of oil, and we'll give the... the um, the front and the back a coat of oil. Like I say, I'll clean out the back with a router later on today. And uh, then I'll stick some pictures up of show everybody what it looks like finished. It looks really, I like it. It looks really nice. I think the wood color and the purple come together really well. If you haven't tried this burnishing oil, you should really try it. It's really, really nice. It smells lovely. I'm just going to bring that right over that edge. So that gives a chance to soak into that. tissue just buff that up so a little bit of speed You say you feel the need for speed. Oh, Mick said he's got thunder. Oh, I hear thunder. Richard Austin said, which burnishing oil is it? The citrus, Hampshire Sheen Citrus Burnishing Oil. So what I'm going to do, last of all, just to protect the resin, give it a little bit of UV protection, I'm going to put some Auto Glim Car Polish over the top of it. Just to um, finish it off, gives it a little bit of protection against fingerprints and UV. Um, so hopefully, the, the paint should be UV protected, but this will just hopefully uh, give it a little bit more support. Don't need a massive amount, just need a little blob, just to, uh, if you can get it out of the bottle. Um, Chris put Nikki, you've got no excuse for being late ever again. I'm never late. <laughs> yeah, right. You'd be late for your own funeral, you would. So just wipe this over. Don't need to have the lathe running for this. Just rub it in or just lay it over the top. All we'll be doing is just laying it over the top and it'll put a micro film of protection over the top of it. Let it dry off for a few seconds. 
secondes. I'm just going to turn the lamp down and buff it up. Crystal says, Steve, you can tell yourself a time lord now. <laughs> So it's got the protection on it now, so that's all nice and smooth. Oh, won't get no fingerprints on it because it's got that little bit of protection over it. And it's got a lovely shine to it. Absolutely lovely shine. Don't know if you'll be able to see it on the overhead camera, but let's have a look. Don't know if you can see on this edge here. What a lovely shine it's got to it. Absolutely lovely. And it's got what I wanted. You can see the, the cogs through the side, which is what I really wanted to see. So, um, and we'll see if we got rid of that air bubble. Has it gone? Mick said, really like that, Steve. Looks great. And Chris Dodd said, nice work as usual. Thank you, sir. Um, so, yeah, the air bubble's gone. We're filled, we've either sanded it out or we've filled it with something or other. That's all gone. So, what we've got to do now is, obviously, route right out the back for our clock workings to go through the middle, which I will make a template and do after the live. So, we will route her out. Um, obviously the back. Let's put on overhead camera. Right, Brian's put. Um, I think I may cover for Paul at lunchtime tomorrow rather than tomorrow evening. Then there won't be a clash with the 360 club. What do you think? Sounds like a plan, Brian. Sounds like yep. a plan. Gary said good idea, and Todd said perfect. Grandpa Jim would turn. said outstanding, Steve. Thank you. So what I've got to do basically is just mark where that is sink that into the into the piece and then um which i will do i'll mark it well i'll get a pencil now and mark it now then i'll just cut that out with a router or it helps if you've got a sharp pencil steve let's just sharpen a pencil quickly got lead in it yeah. so we just mark that out cut that out with a router so rude That's a long way down. <laughs> Doesn't matter whereabouts it is as long as it's in that gap. Um, I'll clean it out with the router, which is not a great deal to come out of there, really. Actually, we've got to take it out that bit as well, don't we? Because if not, that won't go in. Stupid boy, Pike. So we want that bit out as well. So I'll clean that out. That'll sink into the that'll sink into the piece. That wants to be about the depth of what that is. So this then sits flush on there. Then that'll come through, and uh, we can get the hands on it. The hands actually should get a pair of scissors because the last ones I tried to tear the bag. I ended up bending the bending the, the hands. So the hands then should just come inside, which is what I want, because obviously they're going to sit high a little bit, so they'll come up a little bit higher. So they should just about come a little ben bit Ben said higher. you should do both, Brian. Always said good idea, Brian. Pete said he's clicked the thumbs up despite the lack of carrots. <laughs> Barry's Wood Creations, another masterpiece, Steve. Brilliant. Thank Roger Brian. Kent said good idea, Brian. Pete said go for it, Brian. Roy said, do it upright. Graham Brown said, very nice, Steve. And Pete said, he can't hear one for Brian tomorrow because he'll be out all day. Ward Wilson says, nicely done, Steve. Thank you very much. And Brian says, Steve, square the recess up with blocks. Square the recess up with blocks. I don't understand what that means. So Brian's doing one o'clock tomorrow. Perfect. Right, so basically that's how I look when it's the clock. So hopefully, her ladyship will be happy. <laughs> Is that instead of my flowers? Can't have everything, love. Mm. Love it. Love, 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 love it. So I'll move that cloth because I split that cloth. Stand it back on there. Colin said, love it. Brent said, amazing, Steve. Thank you very much. It's got a nice shine to it, I must admit. It's got a nice, uh, nice shimmer to it. He the, said you, uh, Len said your time's not right then. Oh, really? You got it at 9.30. <laughs> I 
I'd be right twice a day. That's the main thing. Oh, no, he said it's 9.30. Oh, yeah, no, the clock can say that as well, I suppose. So, yeah, so... Um, so... I, I originally done it... I was originally going to do that as a player. Len says, hey. looks great, Steve. Gary said, brilliant job, Steve. Looks fantastic. Chris Dodd said, front blocks horizontal. Dr. Bob said, oh, fantastic. I see. Yeah, I see, I see, I see. Brian said, it's block board. Yeah, I see. <sighs> It looks better if in line with the board blocks, yeah. Like that. And ben says, looks great, Steve. I'm with you now. I understand what you mean now. Right, this still you. keeps saying battery low. Hopefully that'll last for this live. I don't know why. Well, we're, we're finishing in about five minutes, so you'll be fine. That's because you never charge it. That's what the problem is. You just walk out of the workshop thinking you're lady muck and not coming back. What more can I say to that? Don't cheat me, boy. Boy, boy. Whereas you weren't getting fed today. Well, I've got to cook oh, no. anyway. You're cooking anyway. <laughs> right. Shame. So, let's turn that light off. Don't need that one. Did you hear that, everyone? Steve is actually cooking. Um, <laughs> Norman said, we're the cogs from Auntie Amazon. Pete says, rotate 90 degrees, Steve, so the block goes across, not vertical. And Roy said, is Tiny Turn alive today? Yes, should be at half past three. I'll put a link in for you if you want. And Dr. Bob said it is 9.30 there in Detroit. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, it was right time somewhere in the world, weren't it, mate? Yeah, it's always right somewhere in the world. Let's have a look. YouTube. So if I you get did, a link where'd you get you? the clock faces from? Uh, I would imagine they came off of line somewhere. I couldn't tell you exactly where. They're not the ones we bought from Snaton's that time. Uh, ooh. No, I don't think so. Cause we did buy some from there, didn't we? I don't think so. Let's uh, just see if I can find Emma's. Oh, here yeah, it is. Yeah, Pete, just for you. So this should be Emma's link. Oh, put it in. Always put it in. There you go. Oh, that's a different one. You're just here got. for the sideline, mate. That's a different one to what I've got. Oh, no, that is the same one. Right, so anyway, thank you very much, everybody, for coming over. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, we will be back on Friday. Oh, it's Battle of Makers next Friday, isn't it? Yep, that will be on the 28th. You'll Battle be doing of the Makers. Week. Battle of the Makers. I've got issues with my internet because it keeps buffering. BT have put us on this audio, this internet phone system, and I've had issues ever since. So I've got issues with my phone line at the moment. Do you think that's why my chat went? Yep, I think it is because I'm, I'm buffering all the time from anywhere from 16 megasecond upload to down to about six. So we've got issues. I've rebooted the router and it's still playing up. So it may be a phone call to BT. So anyway, that's not your problem. That's my problem. So I will see you guys on Sunday. Um, no, I won't. I'll see you on Friday for Battle of the Makers. Um, massive thank you to each and everyone who came over Friday night for the Tiny Turner special guest there. Uh, really, really good evening. And uh, we had an amazing amount of people. I think we had about 123 people in at one time. So, oops, excuse me. So, um, a massive achievement for the channel, that is. So, uh, thank you to everybody. Um, don't forget, Pete is on tonight, 8 o'clock. Uh, Brian is on tomorrow afternoon at 1, 1 o'clock covering for Paul. If you're a member of the Wood Turn and 360 Club, um, there is a club meeting tomorrow night, so make sure you are what there. Time is that? Uh, that will be start. Doors open at seven. Starts at half past seven, I believe. Um, doors open. So it's just a, a catch up from last month's demonstrate or the month's demonstration. Um, normally a good conversation, and I believe it's also the show and tell of the wibbly wobbly whatever pieces they are that people have entered. I haven't entered a piece, unfortunately. I haven't had the time to do one, but. Um, be some interesting pieces, I'm sure. So, if you remember, I'll see you there tomorrow night. Other than that, have a great rest of your weekend, a uh, great week, and I will see you on Wednesday. For no so sorry to chat quickly. Uh, Richard Austin said that was terrific. Colin said, Great lives always stay safe. All ta ta for now. Great show. Take care, says Len. Chris Dodd says, Be good, everyone. Dr. Bob, wonderful. Thank you. Um, Brian with the Y says, Beautiful clock, very informative, Steve. Joe said, Lovely peace. Thank you, Joe. Um, so if I don't see you before, I see you Friday for Battle of the Makers. The link will be going up midweek. So make sure you come over and check out the Battle of the If you haven't been over to watch Battle of the Makers, you are missing something spectacular. The crews, the teams are mega. They make the they make it. They really do make it. So 
But don't see you before. I'll see you on Friday. Have a great weekend. Have a great week. Speak to you soon. Take care. And bye for now. See you later, guys. Bye. Say bye. See you guys. I'm a bit of a bit of a bit of that's all, folks.